Look, the Call of Duty franchise has been around for a very, very long time to say the least. It seems like since the dinosaurs roamed the earth at this point, yeah. through all of that time, it seems like there's been a lot of ups and unfortunately a lot of downs as well. What the hell? But in that time, we've been given countless maps to fight, complain, and argue on. But do you ever find yourself sitting there thinking about life and then all of a sudden a deep thought about Call of Duty maps just pop into your head? Then you sit there and think, what's more important, this cute girl that might be into me or Call of Duty maps? Then your brain comes to the logical solution that of course Call of Duty maps is what you should be fully focused on and during those deep thoughts, you find yourself wondering, hmm, what the hell are the greatest Call of Duty maps in the history of this great franchise? Then fortunately for you, I arrive from the heavens, fall flat on my face on the concrete. Oh shit, man. No, that's not what happens. I come down from the heavens and give you all the answers to that important question here today. So right now, I'm going to tell you the top 10 maps in Call of Duty's legendary history. And as always, remember, this is an opinionated video, so you are likely to disagree with some of my choices, and that's okay. I promise everything will be fine. If we disagree, no need to get your panties in a bunch, and the death threats will not be necessary in the comments at this time or ever actually. What is necessary though is giving me your top 10 all time list for Call of Duty in the comments. And also I got a shout out to 675 of you that have subbed already. My goal by the end of the year was 1000 of you. Not looking likely, but hey, we have six or seven weeks to go in the year. So maybe like 50-ish a week and we sh could like still get there. So maybe I'm gonna be optimistic on that one, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the channel as we grow together. But now, let's get back to the video. Number 10, Hackney Yard. Well, we are starting this off with potential controversy, and uh, that is my number 10 Hackney Yard from Modern Warfare 2019. I'm one of the biggest MW19 defenders out there, so I had to put this best map from that game in my top 10. Yes, the game got a lot of hate for a lot of way too big maps on it, but for me, this one is that perfect size. In terms of MW19, it's a little bit on the small side, and honestly, it just plays out perfectly that way. It's a three lane map, typical Call of Duty stuff, but there's plenty of uh, cover or buildings to duck in and out of, fitting every single playstyle there is out there. Even the two buildings in each spawn would see a decent bit of action sometimes, and especially in the objective-based game modes that go along with like TDM and things like that. For me, I don't know what it is. Hackney Yard is just extremely unappreciated as a map in an extremely unappreciated game. Number 9. Vacant. Next, and probably honestly the rest of this list are highly appreciated Call of Duty games, and coming in from Call of Duty 4, vacant at number nine and seriously for me it's just mostly from the interior part of this map it's just so fun to have these battles over a couple different rooms at times or even a couple different hallways as you shoot down them at each other sometimes call of duty needs that controlled chaos at close range and for me vacant succeeds very well in uh, giving you that high paced gameplay but it's designed so well that you can be tactical about your approach at the same exact time and you also have that outer area if that is your cup of tea. Me, I never find myself really being out there much, so I don't want to like super comment on the gameplay out there, but it's also an option which is great. Maybe this isn't everyone's choice for the best map in COD 4, but for me, it's it works great for that game and the remakes did a good job as well. Number 8. Raid. Oh boy, coming in at number 8, even though personally, if I'm being real, I didn't want to put it on this list, and uh, that is Raid. For me, I never overly enjoyed Raid like most do, but from a critic point of view, I see and understand why it's given the positivity that it does receive. It's your usual three lane map layout, but uh, when COD makes three lane maps back then in the early 2010s and late 2000s, over a decade ago, they were done so well that it did not matter if they kept to that formula. You have the two outside lanes in this map, which are absolutely perfect for sniping or even flanking if you want to try the uh, closer quarter battle tactic. And the middle is designed perfectly for that close to mid range style of gameplay as well. 
That leads to the most fun on raid, if you ask me. That middle lane is just full of fun every single, like, spot of it that you go. The whole aesthetic of the map is great, too, as well. You are in Hollywood, and you can't really beat that. And, uh, truly, this map does belong on this list, whether I personally like it or not. Number seven. Firing range. Moving on to number seven, and this is back-to-back -back selections that I personally find a tad overrated, but are still great at the end of the day. Remember when I say overrated that it doesn't mean that it's bad or anything, I just think they're rolled over a little bit too much and are a little bit highly rated. Raid and now firing range fall perfectly into that category for me. The one thing I always loved about this map is the spawns mixed with the fast paced gameplay that it provides. You were never even close to bored on this map at any time as it played very up tempo most of it, but somehow at the same time it manages to give you a respectable spawn most of the time. Spawning is something you don't really think about impacting a match as much as it does, but horrible spawns can be by itself something that ruins a really well-designed map. If you're constantly spawning and getting spawn trapped and makes it miserable, but the rest of the map is great, really, when you think about it, that doesn't really matter then. There are plenty of power positions as well on this map to fight over, which is why, for me, I think the gameplay ends up being so great at times. You just go at it battling over these power positions that are just so important in the older Call of Duties. Because Call of Duty maps are good when they are either uniquely designed or have great power positions to fight over, or both, obviously. And Firing Range hits the mark with both, if you ask me. Firing Range, for me, just doesn't quite live up to the top six that I have in front of it. Number six. Summit. And speaking of Black Ops 1 specifically, let's talk about Summon here at number 6, the very next entry. For me, this map, by a very, very slim margin, is the king of the throne of Black Ops 1. Also, at the same time, it gets the crown for the greatest snow map in the history of FPS shooters, dare I say? Again, it's that perfectly designed map for fast-paced gameplay, but it's not overly in your face the second you spawn in most of the time. Tons of close quarter battles and a very well thought out main building in the center to battle over. If you want to try and flank from the outer part of the map, you also have the right to do that. You, uh, there's this outer trail on the right side and nobody can ever forget about that ski lift cart that's kind of pointless at the end of the day when you really think about it, but we all know how cool that was back in 2010. Number five, high rise. As we enter the top five, up to this point, you may be wondering where the heck are the MW2 maps at? Potentially everyone's favorite Call of Duty multiplayer ever made, but here is the first MW2 map to make the list, and it comes in entering in the first spot of the top five, and that is high rise, and high rise just has it all. For starters, I would say outside of Nuketown, this is probably the most recognizable map in Call of Duty history. Why is that? Well, the main reason is all the iconic moments and clips everyone has tucked away in their memories from their childhood or early adulthood. So many secret hiding spots to go along with those memories that I just talked about. Not many things better in Call of Duty than those private matches with your friends back in the day that you would play on High Rise. Whether it was quick scoping rising in popularity or just bragging rights between friends or enemies, if you want a private match with enemies that you met online back in the day, MW2 was quite known for that. High Rise is just where you went on MW2 to settle the score, and for good reason. Number four, Standoff. Standoff at number four is exactly how you need to do a sniper map correctly in Call of Duty. I got asked in my BO6 map rankings video, how can you say a map is too big or open, but then the next map that you talk about is too small or overly chaotic? Well, my friends, that's because there's a middle ground that works best for COD. Medium-sized maps are where Call of Duty shines the most often, and Standoff is one of those that shine the brightest for medium-sized maps in Black Ops 2. Snipers in those two main buildings had a great view of a majority of the map, it led to those very iconic one-on-one -on -one sniper battles across the way, or if you didn't have a sniping partner to dance with, you can use your height advantage to pick apart the opposing team on the ground as well. But it's a greatly designed sniping map because ground fighting is more than acceptable here as well at the same time, avoiding the snipers altogether if you really want to. I don't like the huge open sniping maps because you just get beamed by snipers constantly when you have no interest in sniping yourself, but Standoff gives you those couple outer lanes to stick to the grounded combat. 
for most of it. I mean, there could still be snipers out there, but I would say most of it is the grounded combat, close quarter, medium range that you want. As I always say, mixing in every playstyle perfectly is a great way to make a map great for Call of Duty, and Standoff is one of those prime examples of that. Number three, Terminal. Entering the top three first is Terminal from MW2. The top five were really hard to order, I will admit, because they're all perfect in their own way for me personally. But you gotta do what you gotta do, and Terminal slides in at three. Based on one of the most iconic missions ever made from the campaign, Terminal has you fighting in this beautifully designed airport. High ground, low ground, close quarter, long range, you name it, Terminal has it. The interior airport was so well done, in fact, that it feels like an entire map within itself. Or you can even head to the outside, test your aim, and have so much fun out there as well. For me, I love sticking to the airplane itself personally, which is unique in its own right compared to COD maps out there. You could also argue that the airplane itself is one of the greatest power positions that Call of Duty has ever seen. Somehow, despite all the power positions that this map does have, all the fighting seems to flow right to the middle of the map, and this is where all the action is at its best. If you want a perfect feel for how a Call of Duty used to flow perfectly, then Terminal is the map for you. Also, sorry if some of my points are similar in any of these maps, but when you talk about all-time top 10 COD maps, it's really, really hard to talk about different things if they all do the same thing well. I'm trying to be unique and mix it up a little bit, but like if they all hit on the same thing over and over again and it works, then I got a comment on it, you know? Number two, hijacked. Okay, okay, number two might not be everybody's choice, but it is my opinion list, and I'm not gonna lie, I was tempted to make this number one, but talked myself out of it. There is no map in any Call of Duty that makes me happier on a consistent basis more than hijacked. It is the best map in Black Ops 2, and one of the best maps, period. First off, let's start with the atmosphere. Putting a map on a yacht is simply badass in its own right, but then you play it and quickly realize you're playing Black Ops 2 version of Nuketown, if you ask me. It has those two main corridors that players battle let out over on each side of the map. If you temporarily win one, you could go up to the top for some shorter range sniping, but it's close enough that an AR will do the job just as well. Or you could head to the back of the high power position to take advantage of the enemy spawning in real quick before it swaps to the other side. And if you don't feel like rushing down the middle, take a stab at the super fun underneath passageway this map provides you. Some matches this is used a lot, and others you will find a free path to flank your enemy all you want. I mean shit, you can even chill in the jacuzzi tub in the center of the map if you really want to. Hijack simply has every single thing you could ever want from a smaller to medium sized map. There's a reason it keeps returning in every Black Ops game since. Honorable Mentions Before we get to number one, allow me to acknowledge a few honorable mentions that just missed out on the top 10 for me. Weirdly enough, these few mentions all come from different Call of Duty games we have yet to bring up. First in no particular order is Warhawk from Call of Duty Ghost. I know Ghost wasn't everyone's favorite Call of Duty, but that doesn't mean Warhawk wasn't a great map. This had a very, very fun layout, and it just matched uh, Ghost gameplay just perfectly for me. Uh, next is Courtyard from World at War, my second honorable mention. Maybe debatable as the best map in World at War, but for me, I always had the most fun and the best matches here on Call of Duty World at War. It's designed like one big giant paintball arena, and it just had a World War II coat of paint on it. Somehow still manages to have that uh, somewhat three-lane vibe feel at the same time. I don't really know how they make that work, but it does feel that way, and overall, you will have a fun time playing this map. And the final honorable mention is Hard Hat from Modern Warfare 3, and for me, MW19 as well. This is definitely one I could see landing in some of your top 10s out there. Hard Hat is this outer circle area with a fight pit basically smashed in the middle of it. I feel like no two matches ever feel the same here. Some choose to walk around the circle clearing out the outer paths, and some choose to have all out war in the middle section. You take your pick and you're gonna have a fun time either way. Number one, Nuke Town. Last, but absolutely not least, is of course Nuketown at number one, the greatest Call of Duty map of all time, in my opinion. 
Not to give the obvious answer here or anything, but it's the obvious answer because it's the correct one. Simply put, this is how you do a very small map absolutely perfectly in a Call of Duty game. Nuketown is a masterpiece and the most iconic small map in FPS history. Yes, I get it, you might be burnt out on it being in every Black Ops game, including the new Black Ops 6, but say that burnout didn't happen, you'd constantly have the urge to go back and play it in Black Ops 1 if you're being real with yourself. It is just simply amazing and it would pull you back. Just God, the amount of intense search and destroy or capture the flag matches I've had on here through the years, or even just domination and TDM. There's a reason that 24-7 Nuketown is extremely popular and they add it year after year to all the Black Ops games and it's always one of the most played uh, playlists out there. Every single mode just works in this map and it flows so well almost every single match you play no matter what mode it is. Somehow on a small map like this, it still even gets snipers highly involved and it gives them a big advantage when they gain control of those second story windows in the houses on each side. And of course, close range combat is a 10 out of 10 experience on Nuketown and will have you addicted for hours on end and going along with all that, the kill streaks on here are extremely deadly. They can lead to very high kill games for you if you are on point for the day. I like how Nuketown rewards you if you're on point. I think that's my argument with Hijacked as well as Nuketown. Both of them really reward you for being a highly skilled player when, whenever, like I said, you're on point for the day. And plus, as a bonus for Nuketown, they switch up the look of it in every single Black Ops, except for Black Ops 6. They brought back the OG one, but... It's nice that every version looks different and it makes it feel fresh, but they mostly play out the same minus Black Ops 3. And with that all being said, that is my list. Now it's time to give me yours in the comments below. I highly look forward to reading those lists because I know they'll all be different than mine. Opinions are opinions at the end of the day, and I know no one ever has the actual answers to the all-time anything. It's just opinion-based at the end of the day. But yeah, also let me know any list or games you want me to touch on in the future on this channel and make sure you don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on all future content coming out soon. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. That's going to be it for me in this one. See ya. Changing max. Care package inbound.